Joining us now is Claudio Popa, certified security and privacy expert. Claudio, good evening and thank you for your time. Hi, Akshay. Thanks for having me on the show. Okay, so coffee and donuts for invasion of privacy. What sort of justice is that, you think? Well, I think it's, a, it's certainly a concern and should be a concern to more than just Tim Horton's customers. We're, we're talking about um, normalizing privacy violations. Uh, we're talking about trivializing unauthorized surveillance. Um, and it certainly sets a regretful precedent for the future. How many affected customers do you believe will be considered in this? And do we have any details for how long will this offer continue? I mean, you would agree it cannot be coffee and donuts for a weekend offer. Well, uh, the estimates that I saw was, were 1.6 million Canadians, which is a, a staggering number. Um, I hope that the uh, Privacy Commissioner takes a much harder stance uh, than, than what we've seen so far. Certainly, this is not the kind of settlement that is acceptable when we're talking about the types of harms that are possible for infringing on people's rights to at least to consent, which uh, is, of course, protected by Canadian law. Uh, we're talking about a situation where people were monitored um, every five minutes by this app that was running on their phones. That means their data was, um, uh, their, their location mm. was collected and they were tracked every five minutes um, throughout their lives for over a year. That, that, seems, um, that seems like a, a disproportionate um, penalty for that type of violation. And you know, Claudia, here's the thing that even if, let's just say if at all, the court were to go ahead and approve something like that, Tim Hortons is saying that this sort of free coffee and donut will be available via the app once again. And it brings me to ask somebody who has been violated once, how can he or she go back to the same application and, and, and try and get these offers? I mean, there's always this trust issue, right? Absolutely. I'm not sure how customers can trust the app. Yeah. Uh, going forward, uh, it's unclear to me whether the company has stopped collecting this information. The assumption is that they stopped collecting in 2020. But is the um, is the deal that they continue to collect, but that they continue to immediately delete, or have they in fact stopped collecting to begin with? Because if the app was designed to collect to begin with then either it requires a new app or requires a significant update. Right. And if that's the case, do we know whether the Privacy Commissioner has conducted a privacy impact assessment on this app? Has there been a security audit mm. uh, conducted on this app? This is the kind of thing that Canadians need to know and not just Tim Horton's customers. Yeah, I was just going to come to that, Claudio, because, you know, if you look at your phone or if I look at mine, there are so many applications and so much work now happens through apps these days and your personal data is on those applications. So how can Canadians be sure that they are safe when they work through these apps? This is why we have government agencies that are responsible for protecting Canadians. So as part of that investigation, as part of the lawsuits, there needs to be a technological understanding as to how these apps work, mm. how they are approved to go and, uh, and be put into production, be released to the public, and where that information gets stored. Because we heard that the company has promised that if people accept their donut and their drink, then they're going to be deleting this location data. Oh. The assumption being that the, the data still exists somewhere today and until they accept the deal, they're going to hold on to the data. That to me is, is still unclear, but it doesn't sound like a reasonable proposition. Okay. We'll have to leave it at that. The case comes up in the first week of September. Claudio Popa, appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure.